Hello and welcome back. Today we're reacting to some more Kurzgesagt. Today we have the most efficient way to destroy the universe, the false vacuum. Now, I do know a little bit about the false vacuum. To sum it up in about 10 seconds, it's basically that all energy states try to eventually go to their lowest energy state for rest, right? Everything eventually wants to rest. A good analogy is like a ball rolling down a hill. It will eventually kind of peak out at the bottom, right? It's it's always going to roll. Gravity is always going to bring it down. Well, there's a theory, the false vacuum theory, that um, I believe it's the Higgs field is in a false state, a false state of rest, meaning uh, somewhere along the hill, it kind of hit like a little valley, but there's still more hill after that valley, right? So at some point through quantum tunneling or quantum fluctuations or other things we don't understand, the the basic the field, the resting field could drop down. And if the Higgs field lost its mass, then so does everything else, which is scary. So yeah, that's my understanding. Let's see how right I am or how wrong I am and get right into it. What if our universe comes with a self-destruct button to eliminate itself so cleanly and efficiently that every single physical thing would just stop existing and life would be impossible forever? Hmm. The ultimate ecological catastrophe, vacuum decay. Dun, dun, dun. To explain how our universe could destroy itself, we need to understand two principles. One, energy levels. Yes, energy. Can neither the be created nor destroyed. Is that everything has an energy level. The higher the level, the more energy is in the system. Mm -hmm. Wood, for example, yep. has a high level. It can be burned, a process that releases the chemical energy stored in its molecular bonds and turns it into heat. But it's very the ineffective. The ash left over is at a lower energy level than the wood before. Mm -hmm. Two, Stability. Everything in our universe tries to move towards its ground state. Oh, it looks like I might be right. And has as little energy as possible. For example, a ball on a hill is unstable. That's the example I used. Energy. When disturbed, it will roll down into the valley and lose its potential energy in the process. The ball is now in its ground state and stable. Is it that will a main like that? Is that a bowling ball or a face? A face. Everything in our universe follows these two principles. Yes. If something has a lot of energy, it's unstable and wants to get rid of it to become stable and reach its ground state. Mm -hmm. This is true for every system, even in the weird world of quantum mechanics. Yes, very true. If our current understanding of physics is correct, then the universe gets its properties from quantum fields. We explain them in detail in another video. For this video, Do we imagine see that them one? as the rules of the universe. They tell particles how to behave and interact. Like everything in the universe, they want to be in the lowest energy level possible, which is called a vacuum state. Like me wanting to be in bed right now. Am I right? <laughs> this has nothing to do with vacuum in space. It's just called this way because scientists are bad at naming things. <laughs> a truer statement has never we been think made. All the fields reached their vacuum state, except maybe one. Ah, the it's Higgs field. Yeah, I was the right. Higgs field is not stable, but metastable, which is a fancy way of saying that it pretends to be stable, but really is not. Hmm? It would be a false vacuum. I play stable on TV. The Higgs field is responsible for giving particles their mass, which rules how almost everything in the universe interacts. Yeah. What would happen if the Higgs field is in a false vacuum? Think of our ball in the valley. The ball is the Higgs field. The valley might not be the lowest energy state for the Higgs field. There might be an even deeper valley that it wants to get to. This would mean that the Higgs field has a lot of potential energy waiting to be released. Mm -hmm. Yep. The Higgs field could be like a piece of wood, a lot of potential energy, in gasoline, waiting to set the universe on fire. A random spark like quantum, quantum tunneling wow. could release the potential energy of the Higgs field. I don't believe I've this seen this video at before. Any time <laughs> and without warning. If at any point in space this so-called vacuum decay starts. There is no turning back. I watch a lot of PBS Space Time videos. If you've never seen their channel and you are enjoying this kind of content, not me reacting, but the underlying Kurzgesagt video, then you would love their channel. I don't really react to it much because it's not 
really paced for reaction. There's a lot of uh, detail and they're kind of long. So, you know, the, the Curtis Gazog, honestly, is just a little more entertaining because we got the cool animations to go with it and they're really good at keeping you engaged. So I don't react to PBS Space Time, but I do watch just about every video they drop on their own. And I'm pretty certain that they have at least one, maybe more videos on this subject. Uh, wonderful channel. Check them out if you haven't. They're, you'll almost certainly enjoy it if you enjoy this. As the Higgs field crashes into the lower energy state, it releases a massive amount of potential energy. Yep. This energy pushes the space around it over the barrier, which releases more potential energy. And the scariest part, if I understand it correctly, and they may be getting into this, but once that happens in one spot, if that field collapses, it's going to collapse every, you know, it, it spreads basically at the speed of light. So you would never know it's coming ever. Like we have no way to know it's on its way if it's happening. And it could be happening in multiple spots around the universe, expanding out at the speed of light. Thankfully for us, space is expanding faster than light. So, yeah. <laughs> A sphere of the new stable Higgs field or true vacuum grows at the speed of light in all directions. I just said that. Imagine it like setting a sea of gasoline the size of the universe on fire. <laughs> the oh, the meme reference. by a shell of energy that devours everything it comes into contact with. Whatever it touches is eliminated from existence. The bubble will continue to grow forever, deleting the universe mm -hmm. on its way. Yep. There is no Scary, way to be huh? warned since it's so fast. At least we wouldn't suffer. It would just be like, boop, and then we're gone. But there's nothing we could do anyway. Our destruction would be instant. In a fraction of a second, Earth would be gone. <laughs> when did Higgs get the Infinity Gauntlet? But it actually gets worse. If the energy level of the Higgs field changes, it changes all of physics. In I, I do have one small problem with the false vacuum theory, and I have no idea if they're going to talk about it or not. But we kind of have a rule. Now... <laughs> Keep in mind, one of the things that happens is the rules of physics can change, right? So this rule may not matter anymore if this happens. But we do have a rule called the conservation of information, meaning information is conserved. If you have the end result, you should be able to build backwards to see what had happened before, right? The really good example of that is the Big Bang. We know space is expanding in all directions. Uh, and we know that it's speeding up. So, okay, how do we figure out what happened before? You kind of turn it backwards and shrink it down, right? So if it was, if it's expanding now uh, backwards, it's shrinking, right? So you can conclude that at some point it all must have came from the same spot. And of course, we have other ways of verifying that with the cosmic microwave background and such. But information always must be conserved. That's actually one of the big issues with black holes. Um, they have whole theories out about how black holes can preserve information because if they don't, that's a big problem. Once again, that rule might not matter because physics can change in this event. It can rewrite everything we know and how it works. But to me, this is a big problem because it will not preserve any information. In the true vacuum of the sphere, the standard model will be overthrown, mm -hmm. superseded by different physics that we don't know. Yeah. How fundamental particles behave. So that law might not together, matter. How chemicals react. Vacuum decay won't just destroy life. It will destroy chemistry itself, making life as we know it impossible. See, I, that's not a good way to animate this, actually. This is one of the very few times I disagree with some way that they animated they draw, you know, the the false vacuum becoming true, and then there's skulls and desolation and broken things. No, there's nothing, nothing at all. There would be no remnant of us whatsoever. We are gone on a fundamental level. Existence is have gone no idea what it would be on like a fundamental inside. level. It might be a shadow of what it is now, or not. We don't know. If vacuum decay happens, the outlook is indeed grim. If you feel slightly worried now, don't be. 
At this point, false vacuum is speculation based on our current understanding of particle physics, which might be wrong. It might not be right. Yeah, got that. But even if it is true, even if it does happen, and even if it's on its way here right this moment, there is absolutely nothing we could do about it. Not at all. Nothing. Zero zip zilch. There's no sense worrying about it. The good news is we wouldn't suffer, right? There would be no horrible pain. There would be no fear of it watching it creep up on us. It would just be instant. We're here and then we're not. And honestly, that doesn't sound like a bad way to go to me if that's how we go out. I, that would be my preferred way to go out is to not know it's coming and not suffer at all, right? Just instantaneous, a Thanos snap, basically. But yeah, we, we would never know. So don't worry about it. It's kind of like using a ruler to measure a continent. <laughs> sure, you can do it. An eternity you later. You quite a bit at the end. Right now, no one can say if vacuum decay is a thing that's real or just a scary idea. But even if one or multiple spheres of death have already started expanding, the universe is so big that they might not reach us for billions not of years. Not to scale. <laughs> if they're far enough away, they might not ever be able to reach us because of the expansion of the universe. Yeah, the it's faster than light. The light is not that fast on the scale of the universe. So while vacuum decay is fascinatingly scary, right now there are other things we should be more afraid of. Whatever. In contrast to Whatever. vacuum decay, we have the power to prepare for most of them. Climate change, green energy, ozone layer, oceans, Videos water like supply. Yeah, take absolutely. I 100% I agree with that mentality. Instead of stressing out about something we can't control or influence in any way, let's worry about the things we can control. We can make life a lot better here on Earth. We should. We absolutely should. We have the technology. Anyway, this was great. I loved it. I was actually pretty spot on, which is kind of a surprise because it's been a long time since I've learned about this topic. <laughs> but yeah, loved it. These guys always do a great job. If you enjoyed this, please do me a huge favor and drop me a subscribe. It helps me out more than you know, and you'll get to see more of this content that you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all, and I hope you have a wonderful day.